I think his type of music was, uh, was pretty much original. He created a harmonization uh, which uh, made the, uh, the thing very enjoyable, uh, very memorable, and very understandable. The American public uh, goes for a, let, if you want to call it a musical logo, They've always accepted these other kind of bands like uh, a Tommy Dorsey with his trombone theme and his style, or Benny Goodman with his clarinet and his style. I think that the Glenn sound was even more lasting than these others because it was not just an instrument, it's a, it, he created a, a sound and a feel. <laughs> you consider the style of voicing that he used in, in the sax section with the lead clarinet blowing lead of course and uh, one of the tenors doubling the melody an octave lower and the other saxes filling in the harmonies that gave a very distinctive sound. This is what really set the band apart and made it an individual band. That clarinet lead was the identifying sound of the Glenn Miller band forever after. What kind of a guy was Glenn Miller? Depends on who you talk to. Glenn Miller was probably one of the most honest, straightforward men I've ever known. He is also one of the most uptight men I've ever known. Uh, he would, it was very hard to, to, uh, to pierce that veneer. He was quite defensive in many ways, emotionally. He, didn't, he never wanted to show his emotion. It came from a Midwest background, uh, early Midwest background, where men were men, and they, they stood on their own. Up in front of a band, he was kind of dry, but he was a warm person, if you knew him, and if he had the time, to be uh, anything else. I got along with him, but he used to bully people and, and uh, you know, get one up on them. And uh, he had the guys actually afraid of him. I was not afraid of him. Well, he was a very astute businessman. He was uh, all, all out to, uh, you know, have a very successful band. He was willing to try anything to, uh, to make it. I don't know what it is that makes a band tick. I guess it's just playing together. Either you have it or you don't. I knew that Glenn was a very opinionated man, and I knew that he either liked you or he didn't like you. He, it was that way about musicians. He either liked the way they played or didn't like the way they played. This was a world of, of black and whites and no grays. No one can say I'm playing any favorites, although I have a few. Well, a lot of the boys in the band uh, thought that Glenn was hard to work for. There is, I believe, no such thing as a leader that's hard to work for. When a leader hires his side men, he expects them to do what he wants them to do, play like he wants them to play. <laughs> Tom 
to some guys, he was just like that, you know, just like determined. To some other guys, stubborn. Some other guys, you know, wise. Uh, to me, you know, he was a friend. And uh, uh, I, I recognized a lot of these qualities that other people put him down for, but he never acted that way toward me. But I got along great all those years with Miller. I loved the man. I think he was a man that we could all be proud of having known, and I know I was. Okay, boys, let's go to work. Face kid, I'm hurrying to. I'm gonna Michigan to see the sweetest girl in Kalamazoo. Iowa, which was a, a small town, then it's much bigger now, and when he was about five years old, his father was a homesteader, and he was also a janitor and a carpenter, and worked at very menial, various menial jobs, moved the family to Tryon, Nebraska, and there they lived in a sod hut for quite a while, and uh, 
Glenn, Glenn learned uh, to take care of himself. He helped take care of the family. And uh, he was, of course, interested in, in, very much interested in music. In fact, uh, he'd started playing mandolin at the time, and uh, he hated it. And he finally found a trombone in a store, and he made a deal with a man to get the trombone, and he started taking tr trombone lessons. And uh, his family couldn't understand why he was interested in that. In fact, they figured he'd never amount to very much. I went out on the L one night to the Southmore Hotel where Ben Pollock's orchestra was playing. And of course, I went in uh, and I, I had known Ben Pollock as a drummer, and I went out and that's where I met Glenn, who was the trombone player in the band. That's where I first met him. Ben Pollock had one of the greatest bands of, of the era in the late 1920s. He had great musicians with him, not only Jack Teagarden, but a young clarinetist named Benny Goodman. They were playing swing arrangements, and, uh, and I'd never heard a band that good. Just great. <laughs> I didn't know enough about trombone to be a good judge of it, but I told Ben Pollock about a trombone player in Texas named Jack Teagarden. And I remember Pollock said, yeah, he said, well, all those guys down there think they're great until they get up here with the real pros. <laughs> and lo and behold, a year later, he had Jack in the band. But what would they do about Glenn? Because there's only one trombone player in the band. And so they talked to Glenn, and Glenn went to hit Teagarden and he said, man, I mean, this guy's too much. I, uh, I can't compete with him. Get him and I'll just stay on as an arranger. And so that's what happened. Eventually, the band went to New York and Glenn came to New York with the band, arranged there and became established in New York as an arranger and also later on as a studio trombonist. Smith Ballou was the darling of the jet crowd, you know, in the nightclubs. So he got a big band, he got Glenn Miller to, to uh, organize it for him. And uh, he, we'd go out and we'd play for a month, or sometimes a little more, and then we'd break up for a month. And then we'd get together again. That's how bad things were at that time. But this is during the Big Depression, remember. <laughs> Dorsey Brothers was the best brand that the Dorsey's ever had, I think. Glenn was the man who really set the style of the band. He did practically all the arranging. Glenn was not only a, a good arranger and a, quite a good trombone player, but also an expert businessman. Tommy was on first horn and did all the solos. No way Glenn could have enjoyed it. But Tommy was a better trombone player than Glenn, so besides that, he was the... Uh, the uh, the leader, you know. Customer wants uh, never say never. But Tommy, remember rehearsal? We never did finish that number. Oh, let's do it, but don't kick it off too fast. Never say never, boys. Uh -huh. 